Man, you are looking good, dude. Thank looking you. good. It seems like every time I see you, you've lost like a hundred pounds. It seems like it's just you get skinnier <laughs> and skinnier. No, you're no. looking good though, man. Looking Thank real you, man. Good. I'm I'm feeling really good. I really am. I feel better than maybe ever. Yeah, we we were talking quite a bit about it before uh, we hopped on the podcast here. But how much weight have you lost since the beginning of all this? You said, um, well, this journey, and then that's kind of a loaded question because yeah. uh, I've yo-yoed uh, with my weight uh, over my entire life. But um, my heaviest was about four hundred and thirty-five pounds. Wow. Um, what What are you now? If you don't mind me asking, I weigh one hundred and eighty pounds. Jesus, man, that is awesome. Um, but uh, really, this time around, uh, I had uh, over a decade ago, I'd lost a good amount of weight um, and had plateaued around 270. And uh, then uh, at that time, I'd also started playing music again out in the bars and stuff. And so I was, you know, uh, uh, the other old habits you yeah. know, started creeping in. a lot into, of sugar in it. Uh, you know, drinking and, and doing that more often and eating late and stuff like that and just kind of got uh, got out of the habit of being healthy. And then over time, it creeped back up on me. And in 2018, uh, the first 2018, I was up to about uh, 375 again. And I was like, I can't believe I, you know, I was like, here I am again pushing 400. Um, so uh, in 2018, I lost about 100 pounds. Um and then in 2019, um, I had plateaued again. Mm -hmm. And I always seemed to plateau and then start to regress. And I started putting some weight back on, and I put about another 30 pounds or so back on again by the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was like, I can't do this anymore because this yo-yo and going up and down is is just as bad, if not worse, than me being overweight, you know, being obese. And uh, so I started going at it, going at it at a different angle. Um, started uh, uh, really focusing on my mental health mm -hmm. and started thinking about, you know, uh, what's making me, you know, ha feel this way, you know, mm -hmm. and um, started working on that and then started focusing on my life and, and what changes I need to make. Mm -hmm. um, and I started working, you know, um, I'd even considered uh, weight loss surgery and started consulting a dietitian. And um, that kind of got me on the right track again. I, I I knew how to lose weight, but it was, you know, keeping it off. But it got me back on the right track. And Did, was, did you go through with the surgery? No. Wow. No, no, I didn't. Um, I had I, I had intentions of If I didn't, I had gotten to the point where it, I thought maybe it is a tool that I needed to use. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so, what, what what kept you from going with that? Because there's a lot of people that choose that route over I didn't want to the do long it. term. Honestly, I didn't want to have it. Yeah. Never at one point did I want to have it. As the thing was, but I was making myself realize that I was going to lose this weight. So really, I used it as motivation. Mm -hmm. Um, as I, I really was like, I, I don't want to be cut on. I don't want half, of, you know, eighty percent yeah. of my stomach. And, and, and if you, and if you didn't go the alternative natural route, then that was going to have to be the choice that you had to make and that, that was your motivation that was my motivation cool yes. man and uh so i i i got my i got my head right as i like to say it and i started focusing and um started using some of the tools that uh that we have like i started using um apps on there you know there's different apps that you can get on your phone like my fitness pal and uh mm -hmm. and there's one that's called buried uh buried tastic um and it's kind of Focus toward people that go to have bariatric surgery, but it's still a very good, uh, very good app. And I started using it, and I started keeping track of everything I eat. Started weighing my food. Um, I stopped drinking alcohol. I stopped uh, eating sugar. I stopped eating bread. Started eating, you know, I just started eating things that yeah. they always say to do. You know, all the all, all the doctors and all the, you know, they're like do this. And it is true. Do that. Yeah. And yeah, it, well, they're doctors. They're pretty and, smart people. Yeah. And, and these guidelines, they do work if you yeah. if you stick to them. I, I'm I'm a fact. What, uh, what what do you mean by you weighed your food? Uh, like, down to my portion size. I, I will. Okay. I weigh. I keep track of everything. I keep track of how many ounces of meat I'm eating. I have a digital scale at home, and I I weigh how much mm. chicken I'm eating. I, I will measure 
out my servings, you know, like I eat a half a cup of something or a cup of something, you know. I just usually like spoon. go by the serving size on the back of whatever it is. I've never thought about getting a, out an actual scale and doing it that way. Yeah, I'm, I've, I made, I, I did it to that. I wanted to know almost to the exact calorie. Wow. I got the, I got that uh, obsessed with it, if you want to say. But it, it, it I've had, a, I have a bit of an obsessive uh, personality. Yeah. yeah. And I decided to use it for something positive, and uh, that's good, man. So I, I've started uh, keeping track of every calorie I put in my body. So I kept my calories. Uh, started out at sixteen hundred uh, a day, um, and started watching my macros, which is some people for people that don't know your macros are your protein, your fat, your carbs, and your sugar, things like that. And I kept my I, I'm on a very high. I still to this day I'm on a high protein diet. I, I eat. I probably I get in about a one gram per pound that I weigh. I, I put I eat like a hundred about 180 grams of protein a day. Uh, I keep low fat, like 50 mm-hmm. grams or less of fat. Um, I, I'm between 50 and 100 grams of carbs. I, my sugars are very low. I, I I keep my sugars down to like 10 grams a day, and I still do that. And I'm going to mm-hmm. continue to do that because it keeps me accountable. But um, but you but you also feel a lot better too. So yeah, uh, man, I, uh, yeah. Well, I, well, like here re- uh, recently, I've been trying to lose a little bit of weight, and definitely not like you. I've just got a little bit of a gut that I need to lose, and yeah, I've been like eating very clean here the last two weeks. But uh, last night we wanted to eat hamburger. Well, my wife wanted to eat hamburger helper, and it was like the first like really mm-hmm. like a meal like that that I've had in a while. And man, afterwards I just felt horrible. And but whenever I'm out drinking a protein shake or eating eggs or all these natural mm-hmm. foods that are actually good for you, the energy that it gives you and just the feel like it's weird how food makes you happy. It's unbelievable. And yeah. to, the thing is to think about it as sustenance um, and as fuel, not entertainment. That's mm, that's, that's something that we that we all that I did. I mean, you think about it. You go and you know, I let's celebrate. Let's go out to eat. Or I had a bad day, you know, I'm, I'm going to go buy a tub of ice cream, you know, yeah. or I'm bored. You know, we're watching a movie. Let's get a pizza. Yeah. And we, because it's so accessible here in this country. Um, well, well, anyway, well, that, well, that's another thing that I think it is uh, what, what a big problem is in this country is, like you said, how accessible it is. If I want a healthy snack food. or something like that, oh, yeah, it's very cheap as, too, very cheap as well. A hamburger costs a dollar, salad costs seven. But yeah, if yeah. I, if I'm wanting to, uh, you know, keep on my track that I'm on, then I have to most of the time pack my lunch or mm-hmm. just hope that Double Quick has something or pay seven dollars for a salad. And even then, the salads that you get, I mean, they're just loaded down with stuff that's probably just it, as fattening it, as most exactly. meals. So I mean, it's you you're you're better off just doing it at your house and packing meal, your own meals, meal, prep. meal prepping. Yes. Meal prepping is. It's, is it's, it's a lifesaver. It is, man. Um, you know, we won't. I, we won't talk much on the uh, on the pandemic or anything because. You well, know, I was, we, was going to say that like, you're like the only person that I knew that I know who has lost weight <laughs> during the pandemic. It was oddly enough, it was uh, really good for me. Um, it, it uh, you know, you don't. I had no need to go anywhere. I made sure we had what we needed, and um, so I was able to take advantage of that. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I no longer was eating out. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to shows and staying out late and things like that. But, you know, I didn't have any shows to to go to and stuff. And um, that you know, and that was playing music has been my job for the last several years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I was able to utilize that time and I was able to meal prep and I eat the same thing every day and and keep track of everything and. I, just I got focused and was able to, uh, you know, about that time I started uh, doing things around the house, all the things that I'd put off for years, you know, mm-hmm. and had time to do them. And I was, uh, I mean, painting my house, you know, just doing yeah. something, always doing something outside and staying yeah. busy. And, you know, I became meticulous about my yard, you know. I became that guy, you know. I'm <laughs> yeah. in my forties now, so well, I was about to say this is probably happening with the age. That might not have been a quarantine. Oh well, yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, but uh, it just it did. It turned it it turned out to be really good for me to be able to, um, you know, get things uh, 
get things moving in a in a better direction.